Hi, people. Okay, uh, a lot of people have been emailing us and uh, communicating through YouTube about what's going on here. So we're going to give you the explanation. In a second, you're going to hear a recording from a uh, administrator down at the Superior Court in Maricopa County. Her name is Karen Westover. She's also an attorney, and she has verified that there are no existing judicial orders whatsoever that would justify the attacks that everybody has seen now becoming famous April 18, 2008, by the Peoria Police Department in the very discrepant health care system in Arizona, the Department of Health Services under Janet Napolitano. This is the billboard and display that the uh, attackers tripped over, and this is a letter from the Supreme Court concerning the death of Virginia May Vivian Carr and the racketeering that goes on in Arizona in the probate courts, particularly in Maricopa County. This is the letter uh, from Senator John McCain to Ginny Carr uh, concerning the Peoria Police problems. It says, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your letter regarding your trouble with the Peoria Police Department. Your situation is in the jurisdiction of Mayor, therefore I forwarded your letter to Mayor John Keegan. John Keegan happens to now be a Justice of the Peace and the same judge that issued a false injunction against Larry in California who goes by the handle of another Larry. He was already human before, and he has uh, been attacked and assaulted by the same Gestapo that apparently is connected to Senator John McCain. Sunday, car, please. May I assist calling? Uh, Karen Westover. Hi, Karen. Just a moment, please. All right, Miss Westover, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Are this you is, there? Yeah, and, and this is Michelle, too. Okay. What can we do for you? Oh, is David there, though? I don't... I've heard his voice. Yes. I haven't heard his voice. Can I talk to him? Still yes, on. I'm here. Oh, okay, great. I just want to let you know we have your the file. Um, the only thing in the file is a petition. The petition was never served, and so there are no orders. Well, no. We were told that there were orders, and they were destroyed by the assistant to Commissioner Vance, as you know, Ms. Westover, because you were on that call. And so this is, you know, really getting ridiculous. And uh, we were. Yeah, and I didn't hear him say there were orders. Yeah, he said that they were destroyed. No, he, I didn't hear him say that. Okay, well, you know, we have the convenience of a recording so that you okay. could hear it again. You well, know. all I'm telling you is the only thing I can send to our petition is what you want, but I don't hear it. Well, we're going to need to find out what's going on because I'd like, please, if you would, Miss Westover, to lend us the uh, patience to. Okay. To listen carefully here, okay? We are reporting corruption that's going on and it's not a joke. Now we've had people, police officers, and other people that are still unidentified assault us, claiming that they have orders, that they have an order in their hand, that they will come back and do what to the door? Ready to get a tactical team and break down the door. Okay? And these are crimes, considering what you're just saying right now. And I'm very upset about it. There's no question about it, Ms. Westover. You also had stated with Ms. Boating on the phone that you would be referring this to the Attorney General's office after that call to Commissioner Vatz's office was made and the assistant out there, Eli, I believe his name is, Eli Tully, held himself out as if he was a commissioner, saying that these orders are here, but you have to have power of attorney and so on and so on. And I you, the only reason why I was referring it to the AG's office was to determine what I could release to you and what I could not release. Okay. Well, there's a little more that needs to be referred to the AG's office. Well, that's not my, that, that would be something if you want to refer to the AG's office and file a complaint with them, you can, but that's Absolutely, not absolutely. And, you know, as you know, Ms. Westover, we record these calls. So this okay. is a, an absolute discrepancy, and you can be as uncomfortable about it as you want. I'm not uncomfortable at all. Well, then, then there's accountability to be had here. Because people cannot attack you, run at you, throw a woman with one kidney, a kidney donor, Michelle is a kidney donor, into a concrete wall without some sort of justification, judicial order. And you are the one who verified that there is and they should always be in that file and there has to be orders for these things to happen and your call today contradicts that. In addition, a call was made to your office yesterday after weeks and weeks of waiting for you to get back with us. It's now, what, the 18th, is it, of July of 2008. And we're talking to somebody who is an attorney, right? You are an attorney because that's what other people say. I am an attorney. Okay. And, you, and we're waiting for two weeks for you to verify whether or not 
the power of attorney provided you for Ms. Stone is valid. And prior to this, you're asking for an address so that you can mail us these orders. And today you want to play a game that the file only has a petition in it, which is what we told you in the beginning. And, and I said, if there are orders in the file, I never said that there were orders. Okay, if well, we have a problem, Ms. Westover, because Magellan Health Services and the Department of Health Services in the state of Arizona is stating that they have orders and they can't have done these things and damaged and assaulted people, ambushed and attacked them without such a thing. And you're trying to tell us today that they do not exist. Is that correct? Do you have, do you have a person at Magellan that I can talk to? I'm not going to refer anybody to anybody at Magellan because those people endanger human life. Well, if they have an order, I'd like to see it because I have the file in front of me. Well, the police in Peoria, Arizona claim that they do, and you can talk to Police Chief Ratcliffe. We've recorded him. Okay. Okay, and then you can talk to uh, Sergeant McCulley. Do you have a number for Police Chief? I think you can find it. It's a government office in Peoria. Yes, you can dial 8837, uh, excuse me, 7... 623 773 Can you repeat that, please? 623 773 Okay. Okay. And Ms. Westover. Police Chief Ratcliffe. Police Chief Ratcliffe and Sergeant Scott McCulley and Lieutenant Collier, whose name is all over this petition, and another individual that you're going to become very familiar with because this will be subpoenaed, there will be a complaint, and there will be a lawsuit. I guarantee you. And you will be subpoenaed because of the involvement so far. And I'm not joking around. If you get subpoenaed, that's fine. I don't that's right. And there's going to be so much contradiction. But the point I have here is, is that you were asking for an address to mail these orders. Nothing else. No, I said the document. Okay, well, that's what you want to claim that you said. Okay, under oath, it'll be a different story. I'm sure of it. You won't recall. That's the game that gets played. Well, if I said orders, it was because I was assuming that there were orders. Well, this is not a matter to assume anything. People have been assaulted and attacked by police officers abusing their authority under color of law. Mr. Carr, I'm going to terminate this, this conversation. And for what reason? Because I don't appreciate the tone that you are using with me. Well, you don't appreciate that somebody's blood pressure goes through the roof every time, as, every time that you, you have to encounter somebody in the city of Peoria that is corrupt. Well, I understand how frustrated you are. I'm trying to help you. Tell me, tell me how frustrated I am, Ms. Westover, if you understand it. Well, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably put you at 100. Okay, that's very good, and that's very crass. Now, what are you intending to do about it as a public servant, knowing these things have occurred? Well, right now, because you've given me somebody that supposedly says they have an order, I intend to call them. Okay, well, I intend to ask you to do something integral something accountable and something entirely appropriate. I would like for you to make this phone call three-way with Miss Stone as my representative on the line, Miss Boating if she's available, and myself. And I will let you do all the talking, dear. Let me talk to him first. And okay, well, if you want... Way, then I, will. I, I, I object to, I, to I that. I don't think it's appropriate for me to put him on the spot. Well, you might not think so, but I think that because the public is going to hear even this call within 24 hours, and you ought to take a look at the interviews that are going on with celebrities with azjusticenews.org. Mr. Carter, if you want to set up the phone call with him, I'm glad to join you and ask the questions. Okay. Could you fax me over a commitment to that effect, please, that if I make the arrangement to have a three-way conversation with either the police chief or Sergeant McCulley of the Peoria Police Department, that you will participate in that call. And would yes, you please you, provide... Pardon you me? have an email address? I have a fax number. Michelle will give that to you, and then I'll be done with this call. Okay. What's your fax? 623. Uh-huh. I appreciate your call very much, Ms. Westover. Do you realize that your staff has been telling us that you're out of the office until Monday? Uh, I was supposed to be out of the office. I was asked to come in and cover today. Well, I'm very pleased that you took the time to call us. Now, with somebody that is dealing with a corrupt situation, has been so grossly violated, and is facing financial ruin, 
I would expect that somebody who recognizes a stress level of 100 on a scale of 1 to 10 would do something about it and get with the Attorney General, not just to verify whether or not an attorney can release something with the power of attorney in hand. But the problem, Mr. Carr, is if, if, if I were to say anything to them, they need the direct complaint from the person that's been injured. Yeah, so well, you need to file yeah. a complaint. They will not take any action. Uh, I disagree. I disagree with you, and here's why. I don't believe it would be the first time, Ms. Westover, that a public official went to an attorney general and recommended that this be investigated and that the indictments come down from that recommendation. Thank you for calling. Have a good day. And this is the exact proximity in the wall that the lady you saw in the videos was thrown into by this unidentified agent. This woman happens to be a kidney donor and has only one good kidney, and that's the part of her body that lands against this pop-out on the building. This is the exact door where Officer Adams threatens he's going to break the door down, standing there saying he has orders, which have now been confirmed by Maricopa County Superior Court, don't exist. 